Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 31st of March in the weekly market update and the end of the first quarter of 2015. And it's been a pretty impressive quarter pretty much across the board, particularly for European markets. We've seen new all-time highs for the German DAX, we've seen new all-time highs for the FTSE 100 and we've also seen new all-time highs for US markets as well, the S&P 500. However, the gains that we've seen on US markets have been pretty flat all told for the first quarter, US markets have really struggled to really push on from the levels that we saw at the end of last year. And I think that's largely as a result, I think, of concerns about a potential US rate rise sometime this year. And that's certainly been reflected in the rise in the dollar, the strength of the dollar, particularly against the euro, um, as well as commodities as well. We're seeing um, significant weakness in Brent crude prices. And I think that is, is helping to weigh down the FTSE 100 because despite the fact that we did push above 7,000, we are, we are now starting to track lower. And I think it's probably going to be a similar sort of story for the German DAX. The DAX has posted its best quarter, its best quarter since the end of 1999, the last quarter of 1999. Um, so I think it's, I think it's, you know, uh, perfectly acceptable to expect some form of a pullback. And I think that is what we're getting at the moment. So for today, I'm going to look at the FTSE 100, the UK 100. I'm going to look at Brent crude prices because I think they're trading in a little bit of a range and could well test back towards the bottom end of that range. And I'm also going to have a look at the dollar because I think the dollar could be key in the context of where we go to next with respect to certainly US equity markets and, and obviously whether or not we've seen a short term high in the dollar, particularly against the euro and in that context I'm going to look at the US five-year Treasury note. So let's start with the FTSE 100. As I indicated earlier we've hit an all-time high in March above 7,000 but since then we've struggled to really push on and on this daily chart we can see that actually we're in the process of potentially breaking lower. Now this chart is we are drawn a line through the lows from December. Um, we have since the beginning of this year tested the 200 day moving average and rebounded off it and it looks likely that we could well test back down towards that level once again. The oscillator is starting to turn over and it's starting to approach the 50% level and given current momentum, given the weakness in the oil price, given um, the strength of the dollar and given other weaknesses in other commodity prices, the prospect is I think we're, we're still within the broader range that we've been in for the last six to seven months. So that suggests to me that if we do head lower and the chart would it seem to indicate that we are, then we could well find a support once again near the March lows around about 6,700, 6,680. So let's have a look at Brent crude prices. And if I draw a trend line on this daily chart in front of you, you can see straight away that we're finding support round about $53 a barrel. But what's more important is that it's the horizontal lines I've drawn in this chart that are of a particular interest to me. Now, at the end of February, we saw a bearish engulfing candle, and that prompted a, a little bit of a correction lower towards the third point on our trend line from the lows from the beginning of this year. Prompted a little bit of a rebound. We've seen once again a bearish engulfing candle on the daily and the high of that candle coincides with the low of the previous bearish engulfing candle. So that should act as significant resistance. And we are now looking to retest the lows of two to three days ago, currently around about $54.50. However, just below that, we've got the trend line from the lows earlier this year. Overall, I still think we're in a little bit of a range. Fact of the matter is, I think there's more pressure on the downside than there is on the upside, despite concerns about the fighting in the Yemen and the Saudi airstrikes there. We've got the Iranian nuclear talks. Any agreement there is likely to um, weigh on the oil price because penny for penny, Iranian output is certainly worth a lot more than any potential disruption from Yemeni output. So let's finish up with the US five-year note. And really it's all about the US dollar and whether or not we're going to get a rate hike sometime this year. Now for quite some time throughout the first quarter, 
I think market expectations have been that we're going to get a rate hike sometime in the middle of the summer. Recent economic data, um, labour market data aside, has thrown that timetable into a little bit of doubt, particularly given the fact that the Fed members at the last FOMC meeting revised down their inflation forecasts, their growth forecasts and their dot chart estimations. So really now it's when can we expect some form of rate rise because certainly we're continuing to get mixed messages out of the FOMC members, both voting and non-voting members. But also Janet Yellen was deliberately ambiguous on Friday about the timing of a potential rate rise. She's left the Fed an awful lot of wiggle room so that they can act at a very, in a very, very short time frame. So irrespective of what my personal views are on whether or not we get a rate hike this year, and I still, I still remain doubtful that we will, I think for, if you're looking for direction on the, the US dollar, then I think it's important that you not only look at the dollar index, dollar yen, euro dollar, but you also look at the bond market. And this bond market chart is actually sh suggesting to me that the dollar could actually get a little bit stronger in the short term. So let's look at this daily chart for the US five-year note. Now, I've circled in the daily candles where we have a bearish engulfing day. Now that bearish engulfing day suggests to me that prices should start to weaken a little bit. If prices weaken, yields rise. If yields rise, that's dollar positive. So non-farm payrolls this week are going to be particularly interesting given the fact that they're on a Friday and given the fact that most of the markets will be closed. But it's not really about the labour market data for me, not anymore, because the labour market data has been consistently strong over the course of the last few months. It's about the inflation data and it's about average hourly earnings data, wages data. So we could well get a very good number on Friday. We could well get a further decrease in the unemployment rate. None of that really matters that much. It's really about prices at the moment and prices are continuing to fall. So average hourly earnings, we're expecting that to come in unchanged around about 2%. Um, also looking at some of the data this week, ISM manufacturing and prices paid data, have a look at that. Keep an eye on the inflation expectations there because over the course of the next few weeks, it's really going to be about the direction of US rates. So this five-year chart here, this five-year note chart, rather, it's not a five-year chart, it's a five-year note chart, suggests that we could actually see prices start to edge back lower a little bit, yields start to edge higher. That should be broadly dollar supportive, but what, it sh what, what shouldn't happen is we shouldn't, or I don't expect us to take out the lows that we put out earlier this year in euro dollar. In other words, I don't expect the dollar to push much above 100 Against, against the dollar index. And I think that for me overall is where expectations lie. If the dollar breaks even higher, that's going to put even more pressure on the Fed to keep rates unchanged. So that's pretty much it for this week. Um, there'll be no non-farm payrolls webinar this week. The next one will be in May. The reason there isn't one in April is simply because it's Good Friday and most of the markets are going to be closed. So there's not really going to be that much in the way of trading opportunities. So until the same time next week, this is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.